So here we are again, back with some more chemical exchange. And last time we left off, we ended up getting ourselves some of this americium. Um, and now we need to work on this curium, right? That's our next step. So to get curium, it, it's a little bit more complicated, but it always it goes back to our roots, right? Uh, we're going to have to start using a different type of fuel. We're going to start using the HEU fuel that is the 235 versus our LEU 235 that we were using because this, at this point, is going to start producing tiny clumps of two, uh, 242 plutonium. And we have all the other versions of plutonium. We just do not have the 242. And 242 is going to net us the tiny clumps of curium. Um, and we can kind of take a look at how that's going to work. You see this depleted fuel right here is producing these things. Well, this depleted fuel is that um, LEP fuel that we need to make. This stuff right here. Um, and this requires that 242 plutonium. We do have the 239. We just do not have the 242. We do have 241, though. So keep that in mind. Um, but... All we got to do now is remodify our current setup to support this fuel. And if you remember from the time we first set this up, I was kind of like, hey, this thing right here is actually meant for that fuel. The original setup, the original design that it was uh, made for is actually supposed to be how this thing is, is run. But we can actually modify with, with our current supplies. Um, we can chop basically the, the half end off here. And we can still set this up to fully support that new fuel. And I kind of want to talk about how we're going to do that. Uh, we're still going to use the same materials and we're going to actually double up based off the two by two. We're going to switch this over to what would be considered a four by two. Uh, but you can do this with a two by two. I'll show you the two by two configuration right now. So this is the two by two configuration. Basically, you take it like this and you just reverse this and then you fill this in. And this is your two by two that will support this new HEU-235 fuel. This is what this is made for, but we're gonna double this. And to do that, we're gonna basically flip this setup that we have right here. And we're gonna need this on this side because these, these cooler parts have to be touching um, at least one cooler, basically, every time. Um, so we should be able to flip these around and it should work. Like we should be able just to copy the same design, like put this here and this here and just copy the same design. Looks like we're going to have to make a couple more lapis, but that's fine. We're only going to need two more lapis and we should be good. And that design should stand true and should work for everything. So let's just verify that this is set up correctly. Um, we're going to take a look here. It should recognize this. As long as all of these pieces are touching at least one fuel source, uh, which it is, then we should be good. This right here. I don't know if it can't touch other fuel blocks. We're going to find out. Let's go ahead and enclose this back here. And then we'll set up our see-through version of this. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's complete. And I think... The reason, the reason why is we might not be able to set it up in this form. We might have to invert this as well. So that way they're not touching this glass either. So maybe if we go backwards with this. No, that wouldn't work either. Uh, maybe we can place... I know if we close this up, it would work. I'm trying to wrap my head around the ability for this to function the way I'm wanting it to. Maybe like this? Will that work? No, it doesn't. So maybe we will just go back down to our standard casing size. Um, it could be that this is messing things up. I'm hoping not. That shouldn't really matter. So let's take this down to a two by two. Because I know the 2x2 two two will work. So here's just our plain Jane 2x2. Two two, filled off like that. And now it, it's recognized in the two cells. So what I think is... Um, it says it must be adjacent to at least one reactor cell and one reactor casing. 
so in theory, this should work if we were to expand it. I want to see now that we have this situated like we do. Can we s still expand this? Um, and say we flip this. We do a little flip-flop here. That is still connected to at least one here. This one would be connected to this on this side. That's still connected. We fill this with our reactor blocks. Just like so. And then cap this off. And is this not going to work? Oh, it does. Okay. So, yeah. This, this should work. Right here. And that should support four cells. Um, worth. And so, yeah, we should be able to plug that in. I was, I was thinking that should work. It just had to be in a specific configuration. And I guess the other blocks were kind of messing things up. So let's go ahead and try and make this fuel. So this right here, uh, I don't, we should have uranium 338. Do we not? Wow. How are we out of 338? Anyways, this is what we need though. And I think one, uh, one is not going to cut it. So how do we get uranium-338? That's just your base uranium, is it, is it not? With the isotope separator coming out of here? Yeah, the 338. Um, I am so surprised we have 338. It's right here. Ah. No, we're missing the 335. So we make a bit more of that, and we can get more of this just by processing some more uranium. So I'll do two for right now, just to kind of get things started. Um, and we're going to see how this, this rolls. This might work really well, um, and it should produce a lot of power. So just with one, you can see we have 240 left. We're at efficiency of 100%, and we're producing just about... We're, we're producing 1920 RF, but we're producing almost 2000 RF per tick with this setup using this fuel. Not a bad setup. And I do like to kind of dress this up. I like to make it look, you can add different kind of blocks around it if you want to decorate your your structure. And for me, I, I kind of like adding, you know, some slabs to make it look a little bit more rounded. I don't know. There's, there's not too much you can do to make this thing look better other than literally this. So we have that depleted HEU fuel that we were needing earlier. All I have to do now is kind of break it down and uh, get this process started. So with this broken down, we now get that those tiny clumps, but we're going to need a little bit more. This is exactly, I mean, this isn't enough to complete everything we need to complete. Um, like we definitely need a bit more. This is only going to get us two. We technically need, I guess, three depleted worth before we even have enough plutonium 42 to actually probably need more than that. Uh, to be able to get what we need. Well, we have, we have five. So maybe we only need one more. Huh. I want, you know what? Let's see. We sh we might, with just one more, have enough to do this. It's only gonna be three, you know, actually, no, we'll, we'll need, we'll need two more. So that's where I am currently working on processing all of this up to make sure that we have the the right amount. So we only need a couple more of these processed and then we should be good. Right, so this thing is burning through. Just takes a few minutes every every time. I think it takes like 14 minutes for each one or something like that. Um, so I've just kind of been hanging out, watching some videos, kind of getting some things done. But I do think there's some things I really need to do. I need to redesign my base. This is getting uh, just nasty. There's just things all over the place. Nothing makes sense. And it would actually give me an excuse to utilize this space over here a little bit more. Maybe. I, there's a, there's a, yeah, there's definitely a few things we could potentially do. So to make my current cleaning up situation a lot easier, I think it's about time I get myself a Swift Wolf Rending Gale. Um, this is going to give myself creative flight, which is going to be really nice. There's also a couple other things we're going to need. Uh, that involve Project E, and then is going to be getting ourselves our first little Klein Star, which should be really easy actually um, to obtain. We're going to need eight of these, and really that first little Klein Star is going to be way more 
then uh, we're going to need to run that Swift Wolf Rending Gale. So we just need to combine that. Oh, it's actually Mobius Fuel, isn't it? My bad. Mobius Fuel. So yeah, just Mobius Fuel. Surrender that. There we go. We get ourselves a little Klein Star. And the Klein Star, if you put it over here, gets filled with EMC value. Um, it gets filled with 50,000 EMC. And to make that Swift Wolf Rending Gale, we're going to need about four dark matter. We're also going to need ourselves some iron, which I think I have iron laying around. I hope I have enough iron. We have two iron. So I'm going to have to get myself the, uh, the chemical combiner again. And of course it decides to rain right as we're working on all this. Um, I'm just going to temporarily set this up with some conduit. Let's see, take some conduit here. And we'll plop that there. Perfect, that'll get this going. And I'll get myself iron. Yeah, I really need this Swift Wolf for Rending Gale. It's uh, very important. A very important thing to have. So there's our iron. Uh, we need a bucket that is going to have lava in it. Eventually I'm gonna make my lava amulet, which is gonna be really nice. But for right now we can get away with this. This is going to make ourselves an iron band. And then we should have enough feathers and stuff to make this Wolf Wolf Rending Gale. And of course we can put this in here, I believe. It does have an EMC value. Oh, it's a stored, current stored EMC value. I guess it doesn't have a actual EMC value on it. But this can actually go in your bottle slot. Um, there's a couple different things we could do though. Um, I'm trying to, if you hold shift and right click, this will actually use a little bit more EMC but it'll shield you from actual projectiles and things like that. So it's really useful overall. Uh, and this can, of course, go in your ring slot. You can double click your space bar and you can just fly around. Really, really handy to get some of that creative flight going. So I'm starting to get my setups cleaner and cleaner. Of course, over here, I want to keep my nuclear craft type stuff for, for the most part, um, at least till we get some uh, major automation happening. But this is looking pretty good. This is looking pretty good just like it is. But we do have the deplute, uh, depleted. We have the depleted uh, fuel right here. Um, so, of course, we're going to throw this over here. This should get the remaining amount that we need, I think, unless we're waiting for this final one here. Um, but I think this will get us definitely what we need. Um, and eventually, this whole setup is going to be wireless. So we will have a wireless crafting terminal. Uh, we just don't have it quite yet. Oh, yeah. This definitely will get us exactly what we need to make this fuel. Now this fuel should work in here. Um, I'm going to cancel when this fuel is done reprocessing, I am going to cancel this. So all I have to do is just make sure there's no more fuels in here and this will just run dry. And that's when we will replace it with this fuel. Now this fuel should burn in here. No problem, right? Should have no problem burning. This only requires 40 heat. It only has a 40 heat unit. Whereas this one's 300. So this one will work just fine. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time because it is a 76 minute wait time. Just like this one's a 60 minute wait time. And when there's only four cells, you're going to be waiting a, a good 15 minutes for each one. So I was kind of waiting for my pick to break. And a good thing I did, we ended up getting ourselves some of this. We're going to make some reinforced obsidian ingots. And I'm just going to go ahead and make myself the party pickaxe. This thing has a lot of durability, will last me a lot longer than diamond pickaxe, and is way faster than a diamond pickaxe. Um, so yeah, and it's, and of course it starts raining again. Yeah, this thing is amazing. I am going to be working on right here, getting these guys upgraded. We're going to see just how much EMC we have. And yeah, I want to convert this to the other, um, I want to upgrade the, to the other, uh, power flowers. Um, I want to try and see what we can do. At least I can start working on upgrading them, um, and getting ourselves into the next tiers of, uh, power flowers. And then also working towards like things like the magenta stuff right here, which we, we can make and then always throw back in here and it'll grant ourselves a little bit of money. So there we go with magenta matter, right? And this is probably just going to trail us all the way up until we hit the final star. I totally, I, I completely believe that that's the route that that's going to take. I think while we wait on some other stuff to finish working, we should definitely push more into Ender.io as there's so much in Ender.io to work towards. 
Um, and one of those things is going to be a obelisk. So I'd really like to get myself an experience obelisk to go with our mob farm. And I plan on upgrading our mob farm very soon. So once we get our upgraded mob farm, we'll be producing a lot more money and we'll be producing a lot of experience in which we're going to need that experience to put into Ender IO. Um, so let's take a look at the obelisk, which actually I just found it right there, right here. So if we store that, there we go. We're going to see, we're going to need some things called solarium. We're going to need a soul cage, which is cooked up from some soul attuned dye blend. And this right here is going to require some soul powder, which we have to get some more nether quartz, organic black dye, which we already have. And this organic dye here, which comes from twigs and prunings. Um, and there's a couple different ways we can get those. We have a small chance of getting twigs and prunings this way, right? Uh, ferns also have a 5% chance, but dead bushes do a really good job of granting us that. So we can actually utilize some of these saplings. Say we have like 95 saplings here. We can actually start the smelting process of those. I think it's in furnace mode only, or is it alloy? It's going to be in alloy mode, apparently. Um, I don't know why alloy is why it requires or what it requires to do that. But anyways, uh, this is going to be turning it into dead bushes just like that. And dead bushes are going to need to be sent over here. And it's going to grind, grind itself down and get our, ourself those twigs and prunings, which is exactly what we need. And uh, we are going to need a few of those. So if we combine some hellish matter and some sand, we end up getting ourselves some soul sand. Um, and we don't need too much of this, but we do need some gold. So we do have a good amount of that. And we're going to go ahead and alloy these things together. Um, eventually, we're going to need a bit more of this soul sand. So another way we can make soul sand is with chemistry. So we can do um, some thulium with some silicon dioxide. We do have a bunch of silicon dioxide that is stored up in here. And we can mix these things together. Lock this into place. And there we go. We're making tons of it. Um, and yeah, the gold is definitely something we're going to need. We use a lot more of the silicon dioxide than anything when producing this. So there you go. We should have a bunch down here. Looky there. And yeah, this is going to need to be, I mean, I would say we'll do 24 here. Go ahead and get those things started because we are going to need them. Also, we're going to need some uh, gold. We already have that. We're going to need some redstone. And we're also going to need some glowstone. Um, and of course, I think phosphorus is what we use to actually make glowstone. So we can lock that, dump our phosphorus in here, and call it a day. Because we are working towards getting into the dead scary part of Ender IO. So we'll take our solarium. We are going to need to break down four of these into space parts. And also, I went ahead and put my octatic capacitor from my other machine into this one to make it a bit faster. Um, and we already have crushed quartz, so we should be good there. Last thing we need to do is get our organic brown dye. And I think we're ready. We're ready to go ahead and make some of this soul attuned powder. Right. And uh, now is when we have to move into the cage. Um, so we still have to go in here and we have to purchase. I'm going to purchase 16 of these for right now. That is going to definitely hurt my piggy bank, but it's going to be well worth it in the end. And uh, yeah, we have to make some more of these frames. So there's just that frame. And we'll go ahead and get this started. Because what we're working on right now is specifically getting this going. Tanks, by the way, are actually pretty cheap. Just some regular glass and uh, some smooth stuff around it. There we go. Pretty much everything else we, we're going to have. Um, the experience rod, we, we have that. I don't know how much energetic alloy we have. I guess that was literally it. What we have right here is it. So I do need to produce more of that, which is this recipe right here. And this actually goes really fast when we have an octatic capacitor in here. It is super fast. And just like that, we have ourselves an experience obelisk. Right. So this experience obelisk, like I said, later on is going to be very helpful. We're going to end up moving it later on. What we can do here is just place it actually probably directly in the bottom here. Yeah, just like that. Of course, we'll disable this 
but we'll have this pump directly into the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll say down and we'll set that to fluid. And so this is going to start draining experience directly into the bottom here. And just for some lulls, I'm gonna put a soul sand there for a supporting block. And this is automatically going to collect the experience that is dropped now. It's not just gonna be floating on the ground anymore. And then I can also say store all experience and now all the experience from my inventory is now stored. So here we go. This should be the last step, at least in the processing that we are gonna be doing today. We break this down and we now get the tiny clumps of the curium, which is what we needed to get. And uh, we just made another advancement, which is great. So yes, we're gonna take this, make this, you can go ahead and hide everything else. And this is what we're gonna to use to break this down. And there we go. We just completed that. We can set this in here and voila. We just finished another chemical breakthrough. Um, now, <laughs> I need to look up this name. So Berkelium is the name of this element. And yes, this is probably gonna be another process. It looks like Berkelium is the thing that we need to find that we need to find this isotope um, due to our reactor. And I'm sure that this is going to be another one of those things that is going to take a little bit of time uh, to produce. Um, and you can see I'm already looking at the fuels that are going to be required for it. If we dive deeper into this, we're going to find out that this right here is how we're going to have to make it. So I'm assuming we're gonna have to go through the same process that we went just a little bit deeper until we have enough of this curium uh, of the 246 and 243. And I think we have the 243. Yes, we get a little bit of 243 each time we do that. And we get the 246 in the larger quantities. Um, so this is what we're gonna have to use in order to get further into the nuclear craft. We're getting there, we're getting there. It just takes a bit of time. So I'm definitely gonna need to be processing some more of the base product. So with nuclear craft, we are gonna need the H fuel, the HEU, and we're gonna need to basically process some more of the HEU fuel and break down some more uranium, get some more of that stuff done. Um, and we'll definitely have these processes done before you know it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.